Hey everybody, this morning I'm heading out to look at a hot tub. Homeowner called me last Friday. I told him I couldn't get to it till Monday morning. So we're heading out to go check out this hot tub. I guess it's tripping the breaker. He's had it now for I think about six months. Uh, it's a used hot tub, it was probably 10 years old and just keeps tripping the breaker and he wants it fixed. So today I'm gonna show you how I do what I do on a daily basis. Hopefully this will be educational and you guys might learn a little bit about what I do every day. Stay tuned. kind of give you a recap this customer purchased a diamondback spa approximately 9 to 12 years old not really sure to be exact uh, it's got a balboa pack in it and if you've watched my recent videos there are six things that cause the balboa pack to trip we're going today we're going to find out which one of those six things is causing this balboa pack to trip so this is what we call a diamondback spa diamondback spas have been made for probably 20 or 30 years up until about eight nine years ago the company decided to no longer produce hot tubs, but it's still one of the most sought after hot tubs here in Arizona. So it utilizes Balboa equipment. So we'll go ahead and we'll open up the cover. And water in this spa, this guy really takes care of the hot tub. Here's your top side control. Yeah, nothing is on. Okay, this is the breaker box. It's on the wall. And we're gonna go ahead and open that up. And sometimes, a uh -huh, breaker won't reset just because of the way you're doing it. So let's find out if that's the case. Nah, it's tripping immediately. You always push them down and then push up. So you see it's tripping, it goes right to the middle. So we know that that is tripping. So let's go ahead and pull off the side. We'll definitely turn this off, push it all the way down, and then we'll go ahead and pull the side off the hot tub. Now I do wanna point something out. Here's the top side control, which is on this side. Most hot tubs, the pack and the motors will be found on this side. Diamondback did it a little bit differently. They put the top side control there, but the pack is right here. They've got one motor here, and I believe the other one is way in the back over here, or it, it's over here, I can't remember. Diamondback disperse the weight evenly all the way around the whole hot tub where most other manufacturers they'll put the top side right here They'll put a pump here and a pump here and sometimes they'll put one back here Diamondback just did it a little bit differently. So I just wanted to point that out to you All right, I figured it out. Okay, I think I've already figured out the problem. Right down here, looks like it's leaking, and right here it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect these two leads right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the uh, breaker and see if it trips. If it doesn't trip, then we know we got the problem. Now, with this particular hot tub, it takes a 3 8 on the bottom, and a 3 8 on the top because this is a 5.5 kilowatt hot tub heater. So you need a 3 8 on the bottom, 3 8 on the top, and then what we do is we just pull them up like that. Okay, now that we've disconnected the heater, let's go back to this box and see if it sets. It sets. And if you come to the top side control, top side, it's kind of hard with the sun. Top side control is going through all of its tests. 
So that tells me everything's working correctly. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and replace the heater. Okay, now that we've verified that if you disconnect the heater, that the breaker doesn't trip, go back before you touch anything, shut off the breaker. Very important. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and move, remove the uh, heater. Now this particular hot tub is still full of water. So there's a couple things you can do if you wanna remove the heater without emptying the hot tub. You got a gate valve right here. If you look on the back side of the gate valve, here, let me come around the side over here. On the back side, of the, right here is the gate valve. We pull this clip out, don't lose the clip. Then we take this, push it in, and it goes into a little slot and we turn it, okay? That way we've cut off the water to this tube, which goes to here. Now, if you follow this tube around all the way, it'll go over there to that pump and if you look real carefully all the way through there, there's a gate valve right there. So if you shut off that, you don't have to remove the water out of the hot tub. You are gonna lose some of the water that's in these tubes, but who cares? Now, with both of the gate valves shut off, this one and the one that's over there, you're gonna come over here. And you've got a sensor that's right here, okay? And it hooks to right here and you got a sensor right there. You're gonna follow these lines all the way and they're gonna come right here. And you're gonna undo that. That's all you gotta do is squeeze them a little bit and they'll come right out, just like that. And undo the next one. Come on. Sometimes you gotta just wiggle it a little bit and it'll come out of there. Huh, it doesn't wanna come out. There it goes. Okay, you got that one out. Okay, next thing you're gonna do, you got a 3 eighths here and a 3 eighths down here. Don't take those out yet. You're gonna loosen this, which is the coupling that connects the heater tube to the, the uh, shutoff. And then you got another one over here. So undo these, you'll let all the water out. Once you get all the water out, you know, because you're gonna to have to twist this, we don't want this to twist also. So we'll do this second. So you undo this one, you undo that one. Pretty simple. Now there's many different ways. I just got a big pair of uh, channel locks and just twist it and it'll, you can see the water starting to come out of the bottom. Pretty simple. Okay, let it drip for a little while. Same thing with this one. You come over here, just pull it and you can already see the water's coming out of the bottom there. So we'll go ahead and let that drain and then we'll pull it out. Now, if you want to do it really quick, you take your screw gun, put your screw gun in there, pull the screws out. The two halves fall apart. Pull that out and it drains really quick. So that's one way to do it really fast. Okay, once you got those done, and do this right here. There's another one on the bottom, right here. And do those and your heater will come out real easy. Yep, it's not spinning. Yep, still tight. Huh, I thought I was spinning it. There it goes. Okay, you got that? Just drip. That's all it takes. Heater's out of there. Now, if you look over here with this gasket, you can see this gasket just junk. It's just falling apart. Look at this thing. Just junk. Go to the other side, pull the other one apart. Now, when you buy a brand new heater, it does come with two connections on each side. Comes with a set of gaskets, comes with brand new sensors, and then it comes with the heater on the inside also. So I kind of like buying it from this particular source. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing in installed really quick. As always, we're gonna put a little bit of silicone on both sides. Now this is what they call silicone max. I really like this stuff. And I'll show you how I, I just put a little bit like that and then I'll show you how I swish it around. Okay, once I got the silicone like this on each side, the only thing I'm gonna do is take it with my fingers, 
and I'm going to go around just so that I'm putting a little bit on there. I don't need a whole lot. I'm trying to hold it in place. That's all I'm trying to do. Okay, you do the same thing where you can see I put a little bit right here. I put a little bit down there. Same thing. Just I got so much on my fingers right now, it doesn't really matter. So you don't need a lot. And I repeat, do not put a lot on there. So, okay, got that done. Once you got that done, you're going to take that. And then right here on this connection, you'll put that one right there on that side, just like so. And what it does, the reason why I'm using the silicone is because it will hold it in place while I'm putting it together. Things first, back this nut off a little bit and back this nut off a little bit. Now you just slide it right back in place. When you slide it in there, it only goes in one spot. That's it. You know, there's no adjustments to it. That's it. You're done. I'll tighten this up and then I'll go ahead and put the connections on. I now have this connection done right here, which is this is just a 3 8 nut and there's a 3 8 nut down there. Now I'll go ahead and put this on. When you do that, you just back this off so that it's right to the end and then you put it in place. Now I'll go ahead and show you how I do it. I lift it up, get it into place, and then you're going to slide the, the nut over and it'll just thread right into place. Come on, baby. Ah, it's just being stubborn. It's just not catching. There we go. Now it catches. And you just tighten it up. That's all there is to it. Nothing to it. When you go to tighten it, just don't have gorilla hands. Yeah, you want to get it snug, but you don't need to over tighten it. Now with this one, you're going to do the same thing. You just get it in place and you just spin it. Nothing to it. Now I did lose a little bit of water, probably, I don't know, five, 10 gallons. So make sure that if you lose water when you're doing your hot tub that you replace the water. You got this connected and we have no leaks. This connected and no leaks. I take my sensor wires and I run them underneath all this. A lot of other people have them hang out in here. Sometimes they get pulled out when you're messing around with other stuff. So I always run them all the way underneath here and then they come up right here. Now you just got to know which sensor wire is which so that when you hook it up, I happen to know that this one goes to this sensor. Okay, so I'll push that in right there. And then I take this sensor and I push this one in the other. Now these sensors have got a clip. The clip goes to the top and then you just push it in. Pretty simple. Now, the um, heating element and heater tube that I pulled out these down at the bottom were 3 8 Well, these new ones are quarter inch, so you're going to need a quarter inch wrench on the bottom, and you're going to need a 3 8 on the top. And that's all you're going to do is push them back down so they touch. That's it. There's nothing else to it. And you put the two nuts on top. i got to find the nuts. I think I'm sitting on them. Okay, ha, ha, ha. I wasn't sitting on my nuts. I was sitting on the nuts. One of the people that's here with me is making fun of me. So... Anyways, doing this with one hand, so it's kind of tough at times. Anyways, this is all you're going to do. And then you're going to take your 3 8 and what you do is you just tighten them down until they get snug. Once they get snug, you need a quarter inch wrench. And you do not want to try to do it with only one wrench. If you do, you're going to break this and you're going to need another one. Can't tell you how many people, okay, right there, it's snug. And you know what, to be honest with you, that snugness, you know, how, how tight I just tight, it's probably good enough. Um, I don't want you to have gorilla hands, but definitely tighten it. That's probably all you really need, but I will go ahead and put the quarter inch under with the uh, 3 8 up on top. This is very simple, quarter inch wrench. Put that on the bottom. Take your 3 8 and then just tighten it. No gorilla hands, just make sure it's tight. You want it to be snug. A little bit more than snug. Just like that. Now you want to pull out your, your um, shut off. Pull it straight out. Take your clip. Always put your clip back. Otherwise these things can vibrate back and then all of a sudden you you'll, won't be able to figure out why you have no flow. So just make sure the clip is put back. 
We now have the clip over here. We have the clip right here. We've tightened right here. We've tightened there. We've tightened the two three eighths. We put our sensors right here. We've tightened down our two uh, three eighths right here with a quarter inch underneath it. This sucker is ready to fire up. Let's see what happens. We're back to the breaker. Flip it on. Breaker stays on. Come over to right here. It's going through its test. Everything's staying on so far, which I know it's not gonna pop from here. We'll let it go through its test before we hit pump one. Should say PR when it's ready. PR? There's... Okay, we now have both pumps pumping. And what we'll do is we'll go back and check for leaks. Now, when we're checking for leaks, you just gotta look underneath here, either side, and just see if there's any leaks. Usually, it'll show up immediately. If it doesn't show up, you're good to go. So, anyways, that's how you diagnose and change a heater in a Balboa system. Well, that really wasn't too bad. From the time I arrived and uh, diagnosed what was wrong, found the part in the back of the truck, installed it, got everything hooked up, got it up and running to where the heater was working. It took me about 45 minutes to an hour. So that wasn't too bad. Uh, right now, I don't have anything going on for the rest of the day. I'm gonna head back to my shop. I've been working on a hot tub for the last, uh, probably two or three weeks that was in pretty bad shape. Uh, I pretty much removed everything inside the hot tub, meaning I took out both the pumps and motors, had them uh, RC'd, which is reconditioned. I pulled out the heater, I pulled out the recirculation pump, I pulled out the pack, I pulled everything out of it because the bottom of the hot tub was completely rotted and junk. I flipped the hot tub upside down, I've completely remanufactured it with brand new wood, painted everything, screwed it all back together. It's been drying now for probably the last 48 hours or so. Uh, I use what's called a gel paint. It takes a little bit of uh, time for it to dry, especially when it's been kind of cool here in the valley lately. So today I'm going to flip it back uh, right side up, and then I'll start reassembling the hot tub. I'm also doing a video on that. But anyways, that's where I'm heading today. This video is kind of a video of how I do what I do all day long. So thanks for tuning in, and we're heading back to the shop, everybody. <laughs>